Thank you for joining us today for the core and outbound filtering activation tutorial for administrators. Today we'll be going over the necessary first steps in activating this product and answer a few frequently asked questions. Let's get started. Go ahead and log into your web console which lands you on the email protection overview page. The first thing we want to do is verify that the correct inbound servers have been set. This is the location on the internet to which email should be delivered after being filtered. Acceptable formats are fully qualified host names or static IP addresses. The default port is 25, but you can modify that here. You can list multiple SMTB host addresses and prioritize them based on the preference number. The lower the number, the higher the preference. If the first host fails, delivery to the secondary host will be attempted, and so on. If the last listed host fails, the disaster recovery service will engage automatically, generally about after 15 minutes. Check the active box and be sure to save. You can test connectivity to these hosts using the Test Connectivity button on this page. The resulting message will let you know if connectivity succeeds and if it fails the reason. If you are provisioned for the outbound filtering service, we allow your outbound email traffic to relay based on the gateway IP of your mail server being registered on this page. Enter your static IP address here. We cannot accept DNS names and will not route email for dynamic IP addresses. If you wish to list a consecutive range, CIDR notation is accepted. Instructions for configuring your Exchange smart host are also provided here. With that, you're ready to change the MX records. MX stands for Mail Exchanger. These are a specific kind of DNS record that determines how email addressed to recipients at your domain routes through the internet. Changing your MX records is done within your DNS host's zone file. You may have access to their control panel to do this, or you may have to open a support request with your host. On this page, the console provides recommended MX record settings. After adding these, deleting all other MX records is recommended. You do not need to make any modifications to any other DNS records, such as A or WWW records. After changing the MX records, mail will begin to flow from the sender through the filtering service to your network. It can take several days for this modification to propagate throughout the entire internet. After several days, it is a best practice to lock down your mail port to block all email traffic unless it originates from these specific IP address ranges. You may be wondering what about users? Not to worry, even before users are created, email traffic on behalf of all users is filtered and routed to the destination mail server by default. Users are automatically created based on inbound mail flow, a feature referred to as SMTP discovery. As users are created, they begin to receive spam quarantine reports via email and enjoy personal allow and deny lists and other configurable options. The core and message continuity tutorial for users offers more detail on the SQR user options and interface. Even though SMTP discovery is the recommended setting, you can also manually configure users. There are a few options here. The first is individual creation mode where you can create users one at a time. The second is the batch creation mode, where you can copy and paste entries into this field. Or you can upload a file. Refer to the help button for formatting details. Another option is directory synchronization through LDAP. It is beyond the scope of this tutorial to go into detail about this setup, but you can refer to the online documentation or the dedicated directory sync tutorial for administrators. With your users taken care of, you may also be wondering about policies. Policies answer the question, how will email be handled once the MX records are changed? For that, we navigate to Policies tab under Email Protection. The system works very well out of the box and does not require customization to be effective against viruses and spam. You can change policies based on your handling preferences for messages containing viruses, spam, undesired content, and various attachment types and sizes. But we recommend letting it run several days to a couple weeks with the default settings before making any changes. One caveat to this may be the policy allow list. If you have an existing whitelist you'd like to import, you can do so here. Use the help button for information about the required format. You can also make manual entries as needed. After you've modified your MX records, you'll want to confirm that mail is properly flowing. Within about 15 minutes of changing the MX records, you should see data start to appear here. There are a variety of reports available. Threat Overview is a nice report showing rolled up data for all threat types for the current period. You can select by day, week, or month. Data for the current and previous months are kept online. All reports are available for download to CSV. A nice deliverable to show return on investment are the performance reports. PDF attachments sent via email weekly or monthly. 
They show information about threats caught and disaster recovery activity on a weekly or monthly basis. These can be configured to be emailed to predefined distribution lists within the console. What you can expect next. Users will begin to receive spam quarantine reports within the first few days. This will allow users to review items caught as spam, release messages from quarantine, allow the sender by using always allow, deny the sender by using deny, and access their personal options in the console without manually entering credentials. Please refer to the core and message continuity tutorial for users for more detail on user options. Administrators can manage the entire quarantine for users who don't yet have a user ID or have not received a spam quarantine report. If a message is falsely identified as spam, release it from quarantine and send the internet header to not spam at spamsoap.com. For details on what to do if spam is still getting to the inbox, please refer to the spam management tutorial for administrators. This concludes the activation tutorial for the core and outbound filtering products. If you have questions or need additional information, please consult the online help within each page or contact the support team.